In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And also with you. A very warm welcome to the Cathedral as we gather around the Lord's table this morning for worship. A special treat today, there's a party bag for everyone to take home. And in it, there's uh, the chance to think about what the cathedral means to you and how we might all want to support it to the best of our ability. I think Morwenna is going to help us think through the subject in her sermon this morning. Now we pray with and for our cloister club as they depart to their activities, saying together, Come Come to to us, us, Lord, as as we we gather gather here today. today. Live with us, Lord, through our worship and our prayers. Help us to hear you, help us to know you, and And help us to be with you today and always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen.
Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went away to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches into a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I wonder what you think of when you think of Mary Magdalene. This is a question I was reflecting on this week with my students in my course on early Christian women. We looked this week especially at the way in which Mary Magdalene was faithful to Jesus to the last, watching by his cross, concerned that he should be buried properly, and eagerly rushing to his tomb on the day after the Sabbath, so that she and her friends could anoint his body with spices and balm. In Luke's Gospel, Mary and the other women find the tomb empty and are addressed by angels. And in John's Gospel, we have the wonderful account of Mary Magdalene meeting Jesus in the garden, the first to encounter the risen Christ. And in both Gospels, Mary rushes back to the other disciples to tell them what has happened, earning her the early Christian title, Apostle to the Apostles. This Mary is the model of the faithful disciple. She is faithful in her devotion to Jesus to the end. And after the resurrection, she obeys his commission to go and tell others the good news. There is something about her which seems always to be reaching forward. Her desire to reach out and touch Jesus as she recognised him in the garden seems somehow to express this 
She's always reaching out for God, always reaching forward. So when I read the words of our epistle this morning, having talked about Mary this week, I thought of Mary Magdalene. These words seem to fit her so well. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. However, this is not the only side of Mary Magdalene. Luke tells us that as Jesus went on his journeys, preaching, teaching and healing, he was accompanied by a group of women. Women who were paying the disciples' expenses. So Luke says, Mary called Magdalene and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Cusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. And Luke's pronouns here in the Greek make it very clear it's the women paying for the journey. So besides this spiritual side to Mary, the side that was always reaching out to God, there was also, I think, a deeply practical side. Mary and Joanna and Susanna and the other women were the ones who were paying for Jesus' missionary journeys. Mary knew that even the Son of God needed a place to sleep and meals to eat, and she made it her responsibility to help pay for that. Even the mission of Christ himself needed to be supported by regular giving. But why did Mary do this? The passage from Luke's Gospel which mentions these women also describes Mary Magdalene as the woman from whom seven demons had gone out. In other words, Mary had been healed by Jesus. Mary paid for Jesus to travel and preach and heal because she had experienced that healing. She wanted Jesus' mission of preaching and healing to continue. She wanted as many people as possible to share in his words of hope and healing. So as I reflect on Mary and her money, I find myself wondering, well, why do I give money to the church? Well, I might not have such a dramatic story as Mary, but in the end, I think the motive is basically the same. I have known the healing love of Jesus Christ, and I want others to know that too. I have benefited hugely over my lifetime, from a child to an adult, from being part of the church communities which have shaped me and nourished me. I have learned from them that it's okay to ask questions and not to know all the answers. I have learned from these communities that I am far from perfect, and that's okay. I have learned that God doesn't measure success in the way that society measures success. I have learned that I don't have to do anything to earn God's love. I have learned that, quite simply, I am loved. In a world where identities seem fragile and contested, challenged and fought over, I have found that my identity is secure in Jesus Christ. I am who I am because I am loved in Christ. And the communities in which I have learned this are the ones in which I have been allowed to, in a small way, reach out to what lies ahead, to explore, to ask questions, to keep reaching out, but to do so in the security of knowing that I am loved. My relationship with God does not depend on how successful I am in that striving after God, for God is already here with me before I start. And this is why I am very fond of Mary Magdalene. 
or perhaps to put it better, I find her an inspiration. That woman who was always reaching out, but who knew from the way Jesus called her by name in the garden, that she was secure in God's love. But I want others to know that security too. And I have enough of a practical side to know that the mission of the church cannot be based on goodwill and fine ideas. So here too, Mary Magdalene can be an inspiration. If the mission of Jesus Christ in Palestine needed the money of these women to keep it on the road, then so does too the church today need regular giving. We need it so that, as a cathedral community, we can each of us share what we have been given. So this Sunday, the cathedral is reaching out to its regular worshippers to say two things. First, if you do give regularly, thank you. Your money helps us keep the cathedral open for all those people who come and worship in it during the week. Your money helps pay not just for the big services, but the smaller ones too. It helps pay for the staff behind the scenes that keep the cathedral open, so that it's not just a tourist attraction, but a living place where anyone can come and pray if they need to. All of us, I think, who have spent any time in the cathedral during the day will have moving stories of those who have come and found a sense of peace, have been able to articulate a prayer that has been hard to say elsewhere, have been able to mourn or celebrate. So on behalf of all those people whom the cathedral reaches in so many ways, thank you. Secondly, if you are a regular worshipper at the cathedral and you do not give or you do not give through one of our regular giving schemes, we're inviting you today to consider joining one of those schemes. Kate reminded us last week that for Jane Austen, Michaelmas was a good time of year to fettle one's finances. So as you fettle your finances this autumn, we're asking you to think about how regular giving to the cathedral might fit in. Now, we know that not everyone will be in a position to give very much. There are multiple demands on our income, and we know that you'll be weighing up your giving to other causes. For all of us, cathedral giving needs to be fitted into a broader picture. But we're not asking you to focus on this sum of money or that sum of money. We're inviting you to reflect on what it is about the cathedral that keeps um, you coming back and to consider what you can give so that others can share in what it is that is important to you. We're inviting you to reflect on the pattern of discipleship that we find in Mary Magdalene, a pattern in which devotion and practical support went hand in hand. In a nutshell, we're asking you to consider how can we be all a little bit like Mary?
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. We bring before you all those who work as bishops, priests or deacons in your church. We pray for our bishops Jackie and James, and for all those who lead our worship here in this cathedral. In particular, we ask for your blessing on all those lay ministers who were licensed here in the cathedral yesterday, and also on their supporters. Give them discernment in their ministry, compassion for all who are in need, and courage to stand for what is right and true. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we bring you before you this morning, the people of Israel. God and Father of us all, hear the prayer we offer up for the peoples of Israel and Gaza. Comfort those who have lost homes and loved ones. Remove fear, prejudice and hatred from the hearts of all people. Break down the barriers that divide one nation from another. And give the leaders of those nations the discernment and courage to choose the paths of peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those in authority, both in this country and elsewhere. Bless and guide Charles, our King, all the royal family, and those in government who work hard to sustain the society in which we live. Endue them with a spirit of wisdom and keep them in your fear that in obedience to your laws, they may promote the well-being of the nation and further the cause of justice and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, we bring before you, O Lord, all those who are suffering. Father, we commend to your love and care those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and especially those known to us, whom we hold up to you in silence now. In your goodness and mercy, grant them health of body, soundness of mind, and peace of heart that in wholeness of being, they may glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. In particular, we remember all those named in our service booklet. Dave Heyman, Diane Timms, Michael Pagliero, Barbara Parry, Daphne Lemmy, Paul Nina, Charles Mustard, Travis. We remember also Peggy Conway, whose anniversary falls at this time. God of the living and Father of our risen Lord, we are glad in your presence today as we remember those who have gone before us, believing your promises and trusting in your mercy. Help us to follow them as they followed Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Forgetting what is past, straining forward to what lies ahead, rejoicing in the fellowship of Blessed Mary, the Mother of our Lord, of St. Peter and all your saints, 
we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own. 
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Michael the Archangel, uh, St Peter, St Edward the Confessor and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus invites us to call God our Father, and so we have the confidence to say, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for being us. bring down my body mass index and so we're not allowed biscuits but the coffee is very fine indeed and worth saying for more than that there are lots of people here whose faces are sort of vaguely familiar but we don't get to know you and the cup of coffee is an ideal chance to do that i know there are parking meters to cope with and joints of meat in the oven and all sorts of things but if you do have a moment and if you're hesitating should i stay or not why not make the day today the day when you do stay and join us for a cup of coffee? And I promise you, we'll be nice to you. Tonight at 6.30 we have our continuing once a month in conversation with Evens. Today it is the Venerable Jane Baker, who is the Archdeacon of Plymouth, in fact, first female Archdeacon of Plymouth to be appointed. So I do hope that you will come along the bottom page 22 of your uh, notices. You will see that there's a little bit about um, what motivates Jane, especially in this particular role of Archdeacon. Just as a forward notice for tomorrow, the inaugural Hosbury St. Francis annual lecture will be held at the university at 7 o'clock. Details are on page 23 of the notices as to where the lecture can be heard. Do hope that you will come along. Beginning of next month is All Souls Day and we invite you to add to the list of those who will be remembered within that requiem, people who are dear to you who have now gone to their heavenly home. So, Friends, as well as relatives, are most welcome. The list is behind me towards where the coffee is being served. <laughs> to write clearly the names of those whom you want to be remembered. <coughs> and finally... <coughs> well, Wenna has talked in her sermon about many of the reasons for giving. I'm here to tell you the practical things. Please would you take the envelope, the goodie bag that the Dean spoke about. They're on a table near the door. If you're a regular worshipper, there should be one for you. But if there isn't, please don't be offended. Our systems are not perfect. If there isn't a name to pack for you, please take one of the blank ones. And if you're willing to give us your name and contact details, we can include you in future. The scheme we use for regular giving is called the Parish Giving Scheme. It helps us enormously for people to be part of this scheme because they do all of the administration for us. A few of you are still part of the old scheme and if you are, we would very much encourage you to move across to the new scheme. Your pack specifically will have a letter explaining how to do that. Four of you are part of the parish giving scheme, but we don't know who you are, because you have chosen to remain anonymous, which means the parish giving scheme doesn't tell us your name. If that's you, you will have the wrong letter, 
but there's nothing we can do about it. We apologise. The parish giving scheme is just the name of the scheme. It's a national scheme. I know we're not a parish, we're a cathedral, but that's just the name of the scheme. It doesn't mean your money is going anywhere else at all, except right here to the cathedral. Finally, a big thank you. Thank you for what you give, and thank you for thinking about and responding to this.
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those you know, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.